In this episode, I'm investigating whether, and indeed how well, Sugru sticks to PLA filament. And I've got the gloves on again, so it's about to get real. Contrary to what you might think, I'm actually not struggling to open the box. I'm looking for the expiry date, which oddly doesn't seem to be on the packet, which is weird considering this stuff lasts around 13 months after manufacture, so it's something you would really need to know. Of course, it's on the individual packs once you open it up, but there's quite a range in this box, August and March next year. Okay then, we'll be using the August ones in this experiment, because that's a month away, which, as it happens, is most of them. Hmm. For those of you who don't know what Sugru is, it's a silicone formulation that air cures. It's kind of like bathroom sealant, but also nothing like bathroom sealant. For one, it doesn't stink, it doesn't really smell of much at all. But also, its texture is more like plasticine when you're working it. When it's cured, it's basically a hard rubber texture, which is toy safe, whatever that means, and also waterproof. But what I want to know is, can you use it on your 3D printed stuff? And how strongly will it bond? To test this very superficially, I printed out eight cubes, four with smooth sides, four with a cross shape cut into them. I want to know whether the Sugru will adhere at all and whether a notch in the surface will help it grip. I also want to test whether it will sit in a notch, so I can decide whether it's suitable for non-load-bearing applications like, say, rubberized edgings, feet, that kind of thing. This will be a much easier way to rubberize a print or add some kind of shock resistance when printing with PLA and using a Sugru bumper instead of trying to design a multi-piece part with TPU components. I simply spread out the Sugru and stick the cubes together. It's very easy to work with using gloves because it doesn't stick to them at all. Rolling it to a sausage shape helped with the indentations in the cubes. You have about half an hour to work with Sugru before it sets a little, but to fully cure it's recommended to wait at least 24 hours. Well, close enough. I don't have any fancy measuring equipment for this, but at the same time I don't think we need any. There's not much point knowing the load-bearing capabilities of the stuff, at least in my opinion. It's very much more in my interest to know whether it stands up to everyday abuse, which luckily I can simulate by, well, a bit of smacking around. It's actually a lot better than I expected. It is a tall order to stick to PLA. It's kind of like a greasy plastic. Nothing ever wants to stick to it. I think this works about as well as superglue in my experience. I mean, I might just be not using superglue correctly. You can see here I'm pushing it against a scale with a sheer force and it gets up to the limit of that scale, which tops out at three kilograms. That's quite a lot of pressure actually, and this is even the case for the smooth cube test. I did manage to separate it as you can see, so it's not completely welded, but it did take some effort, which arguably is well outside of the normal forces that you'd encounter for most applications you'd be using this for. But I felt this wasn't really enough testing. We now know that Sugru will stick well to PLA, but I wanted a bit more. I designed, using the term very loosely, some blocks with loops on. In the end I redesigned these to have thicker loops because I didn't want the failure point to be the loops. So here they are finished. I've put diagonal grooves in these ones, the reason for that was because it just meant I could print them on their sides without supports. Once again I put Sugru on one side, pushed them together very firmly, and restarted the timer. Well, near enough. This time I wanted to do some kind of larger measurable force test, so I took this dumbbell, the heaviest thing that I own, and I hung it on. And the Sugru held perfectly. I left this hanging for several hours and it did not fail. Unfortunately, I don't have any heavier weights, and I would have been worried about damaging something on myself by trying to add any extra forces. And the quoted weight load bearing capacity of Sugru is 2 kilograms, so we've already exceeded that with half a packet. 
So I think we've made our point in this video, it's conclusion time. Firstly, Sugru does stick to PLA, and more surprisingly it sticks PLA to PLA really well. Secondly, a single pack has a holding weight of at least 10 kilograms if you use it like I did. Thirdly, and perhaps this is the main use, it's absolutely suitable for use on feet, bumpers and so on. Here's an example of a pen holder that I wanted a non-scratch rim on the base. I designed a V-groove into the base and then you could roll a sausage out of Sugru and insert it. I feel like this might be one of the main use cases for Sugru with 3D prints, but I can see it used on drone parts too. If you print drone parts, what do you think about that? Is that a good idea? Finally, Sugru also sticks to glass, ceramic and metal, so that could be used to stick a printed part to any of these surfaces. I can testify to the last part. I made an ugly headphone hanger about eight years ago on the metal leg of my desk, and it still works to this day, and I've tried to remove it, and I cannot remove it using normal methods. Of course, these are all pros. Onto the single con. It's relatively expensive. It's really not suitable for anything large at these kind of prices. Since I'm not sponsored in any way by Sugru, I can freely say what I think, and what I think is this stuff is overpriced. I'm sure it used to be cheaper too when it first came out. It feels like if they did larger packs as well, it could be more useful. For what it's worth, in case you're wondering generally, the best glue I've found so far for PLA is actually just to melt it. I tested out welding it with a 3D pen in the episode hopefully linked now. Also, as a final footnote, according to the Sugru website, it doesn't stick to polyethylene. So it looks like PETG might be out completely for Sugru. I didn't test this because I don't really use PETG that much, but perhaps that's one for the future. Well, that does it for this episode. If you liked it, consider subscribing, and as usual, please comment below. Thank you for watching.